Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to use statistics and math to figure out the perfect time for you to stop dating, choose the person that you're currently dating, and settle down and get married. So a while ago I was listening to a TED talk by Hannah Fry called The Mathematics of Love. And in it she described a perfect mathematical tip for dating. And she applies something called the optimal stopping theory. Now the optimal stopping theory when applied to dating goes like this. In this equation, R is the total number of people that you reject and N is the total number of people that you date in your life. Okay, so the rules of the optimal stopping theory are kind of the same as the rules of dating and it goes like this. Once you choose somebody, you can't go back and choose somebody else. And also once you pass somebody up, you can't go back and choose them. So once you've rejected someone, you can't go back and choose them again. So you only get one chance to select somebody and one chance to reject somebody. And also you don't know who all the people are that you could possibly date. You just know who you're currently dating and whether or not you're going to select them or not. And you can use this equation in dating to find the number of people you should reject until you finally get married. And it turns out to be, for example, if we make it easy and make n equal to 10, so you're going to date 10 people in your life, how many people should you reject until you finally decide this is the person that you should marry and settle down with? So you maximize the probability and it turns out if you have r equal to 4, then you get 4 minus 1 over 10 times 1 over is four people and it gives you a probability of 39.87% chance of success. All the other numbers give you a lower number than this. So in that equation we found that r equals four which meant that we should reject the first four out of ten people that we dated. But it turns out that we probably don't know the total number of people that we're going to date in our life. But you can use a formula that's pretty similar to the one I used before to find this answer. And it turns out if you just use a time-based formula that says, here's about the time I'm going to be dating in my life from 16 to 36. So I have 20 years of my life I'm going to be dating. So according to the optimal stopping theory that's based on the time period of your dating life, the two rules go like this. The first rule is that you should reject all the people that come along in the first 37% of your dating period. And then after that, you should choose the next person better than everyone that you've met up to that point. And according to the optimal stopping theory, this says that this gives you the highest probability of finding the best person that you could have found in that dating period. Now what's interesting about this theory is there are actually certain fish that live in the wild that through evolutionary means have already acquired this same type of sense for dating or mating. And what these fish do is they reject every possible fish that turns up in the first 37% of mating season. And then after that they just pick the next fish that comes along that's bigger and better than the fish that they had seen before that point. So somehow nature has already collapsed to understand that this is the best possible probability of finding the perfect match for you during a specific time period. So today I want to actually test out this theory and I've tried to think of a few ways that I could actually test out this in a realistic way that mimics the dating life. And instead of going out and dating a bunch of women, since I've already found my perfect match in life, I just decided to figure out another way to do it. And with that, I'm going to be dating numbers. Okay, so here's how I'm going to test this theory out. Let's say I have one minute to date. So my best possible number, I'm just gonna choose a number from one to 100. It can be any number, but I'm just gonna choose one so it'll be easy to do the math in my head. I'm gonna say the number is 10. So 10 is my optimal number. In fact, I'll call it my Joanna number. This is my wife, by the way. So 10 is my best possible match. Okay, so how I'm going to do this is I'm going to date people, meaning that I'm going to roll a random number generator. So I just shake my phone, it chooses a random number between one and 100. And I'm going to have to decide in this one minute time period when I should stop 
rolling or when I should stop choosing a number and decide to settle with the number that I have. And I'm, my goal is to try to get as close as I can to number 10. So the first method that I'm going to use is the optimal stopping theory method. And that tells me that during the first 37% of my dating life, I'm going to reject every number that I choose. And then after that, I'm going to choose the next best number that has been better than every number I've seen up to that point. Okay, here we go and start. Okay, my first date, 23. Pretty close to 10, but I'm gonna skip it because it says to. Next date, 85. Next date, 52. I'm gonna pass. Next date, 45. Oh, now I'm gonna choose for real because I'm past 22 seconds. 79, not better than anything I've seen. 80, not better than anything I've seen. 28, still not better. 45, not better. 77, not better. 16, that's better than anything that I've seen, so I'm gonna stop there and choose it. And I did it in under a minute. Okay, so with the optimal stopping theory, I got six away from my best possible option. That's pretty good. Now let's try it two more times just to give me a little bit bigger sample set. 12, oh I should reject that because it says to, but that's pretty close. 93, 57, 68, 30, 74, 36. Oh, I should now choose the next best one that comes along. That's better than everything that I've seen before. See, but you can already see the problem that 12 was my best number that I've seen, but I'm probably not gonna get anything better than that. So, one, one, I'm almost out of time. Speed dating, nope. <laughs> okay, my dating period is now over and I rejected this 12, which was the best number I could have chosen out of this whole group. But because optimal stopping theory told me to reject the first 37% of the time period, then I didn't choose it. So that means that with optimal stopping theory comes the chance that you're just gonna pass something up that was really good and you should have chosen it, but you didn't choose it. And so now I am going to die a bachelor. My second one, I got none. Let me do my third one. Fifteen. Ooh, a good, a good one at the start again. <laughs> Ninety-four. Seventy-six. I'm still rejecting everything that comes along. Oh, five. That's a good one too. Thirty-one. Forty-five. 33, okay, now 22 seconds is up. So now I'm looking for my next best one that comes along. Three is good, but it's not better than what I've seen before. 40, 64, I think I'm gonna die a bachelor again. 16. Ooh, 16, that's also good, but still not better than what I've seen before. Ooh, 12, that's better. So, okay, I'm gonna choose 12. It's better than anything that I've seen up to that point. Okay, so for optimal stopping theory on my first run, I got six away from the perfect 10. My next run, I got none. And then my next run, I got two away from the perfect 10. So now let's see if we can beat this just by me doing normal dating. So basically, I'm going to just see a number and think, am I gonna stop here and say this is close enough to 10? Let's just see if I can beat this not using optimal stopping theory. Okay, here we go. So I have one minute to get me as close to 10 as possible. And I can't go back once I've chosen. 
Ooh, four. Think I'm gonna get closer than that? So I don't think I'm gonna get closer than that. I'm gonna stop at four. Okay, now let's do my second run. Start. 95, nope, not keeping that. 92, definitely not keeping that. 27, doing better in life. 40, nope. 64, nope. 44, nope. 24, doing better. 33, uh, nope. 73, nope. 55, nope. Wow, I am not doing good here. 80, wow. Not even close. 91, oh, my dating period is almost up. Ooh, six, definitely keeping that. Not going again. And I did it in under a minute. Okay, I actually wrote this wrong. My first one I got was four, so it's six away from 10. So I got six away from 10. Then my next one, I got a six, so that's four away from 10. Let's do my final run here. Okay, and go. 16. Ugh, six away from 10. I don't know if I'm gonna do better than that, but it's my first day ever, so I'm not gonna marry it. 50, nope. 19, also pretty good. 52. Ooh, 21. 30. 29, maybe I should have kept the 16. 61. 91, 66, uh-oh, run out of time. I should have kept the 16. <laughs> 94, 76, uh-oh, 39. I only have 10 seconds left. I'm gonna end up with a huge number. Oh no, one more, one more day. Oh no, <laughs> one more. 66, I'm keeping it. <laughs> Oh man, that was not good. <laughs> I should have kept the 16, dang it. Okay, so this left me 56 away from 10. Okay, so what does this all mean here? Well, it's really interesting. I thought I was going to actually uh, be better at choosing than the optimal stopping theory. Um, and in fact, when I had just tested out this test a while ago, I did better than the optimal stopping theory, but on camera here when I was filming, uh, the optimal stopping theory kind of beat me. So. <laughs> so in life, we kind of do this already. So that may be the best combination of using the optimal stopping theory with some dating intuition, kind of weighing out probabilities in our mind of how likely we are to find someone better than the person we're currently dating. Or you could just forget all this math and statistics and do what Napoleon Dynamite says and just follow your heart. That's what I always do. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. If you liked it, remember to subscribe and hit the bell so that you can be notified when my latest video's out. And check out theactionlab.com for the Action Lab subscription box. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.